Breaking down the I do want to say to Donnie and many of you in this room that over a very long career in this city, all of you have helped me and my colleagues tell the truth and to try to tell. What does this event mean to you, Miss Peggy Mars? Oh, my heart. Happy 20th anniversary. My heart is about loving up on my sister. Do you know what it feels like to have your sisters in the room? John. What you see in the flesh I'm free from people Free from myself The doctor lived next door to the janitor The janitor to the, to the reverend And the lawyer We were together Now we get so high and mighty That you create stress for your society Because you don't like poor black folks either That's a health problem Get yourself together So I can stop being taken care of geriatric people <laughs> First name's Donnie, last name's Glover, in it to win it for the long haul. Baby, it's Black Press Day. Well, hello. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. What's How are you? you? Uh, still standing and excited that I'm still here. Okay. Able- Listen, we got, we got a colleague down oh, yeah. in... Prince George's County, and I'm just trying to wait to see if he's going to show his face or if he's trying to give us audio. Okay. Because this is a video show, you know? Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. He, he's coming with the audio. Running All a little right. late. He's getting set up. He's getting set up. Hold up. He's in the building. Oh, Uh-oh. he's in the building. Uh-oh. All right. He's scratching his head. Okay, stop scratching your head. Here we go. Boom. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Donnie. Richard Deshay Elliott. What is where where are you? Oh wow. Wow. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You 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 got me, you woke me up in order to be on here. So I'm happy to be here. Good to see you again, Miss Jews. Good morning. How are you today? I'm doing great. Donnie said today is Black Press Day. Yes. That's Donnie's word. I'm representing myself and hopefully well, the Washington Informer as well. Outstanding. Uh, thank, you. thank you for having me, Donnie. I'm a mute so you can give the intro. Marsha Jews, 196 years ago today, Freedom's Journal was founded in New York City. Co-founders include John Russworm and Samuel Cornish. There were a few people involved, but 196 years later, Newspapers are still around. There's also radio, there's television, and of course, there's this this thing here. What is this thing here, Richard? Uh, vir- virtual press, uh, live stream. And it's not even adding in like you know podcasts where there's no video component and it's all it's all audio. But there's lots more, lots more ways of reaching an audience, also bringing an audience in to hear their opinions. I think that's a wonderful thing that you have that exchange and and it's real time, mm-hmm. right? That it's real time. So what should we be doing as citizens and how do we get them to make certain that we're... Um, creating larger circulation, participation, attendance. Um, 
how do you go through with now we have all of this technology? How do you spin this now so that you can get the viewership, right? Mm -hmm. well, how do we do all of that? How do we, it's a balancing act, right? Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm blessed in that I know a decent contingent of people, not just in Prince George's, but across the state. So through our online uh, publication, uh, people have been able to read, you know, stuff I've written on uh, political updates, on business openings, on just general general updates that affect people in Prince George's have been able to spread simply because, you know, there's people who are on my Facebook thread or Facebook feed who have been able to see it. Or even if not that, they might have heard my name in the past. They see my name as the author. Uh, I We've reached a stage where there's been such consolidation of the press with, you know, the New York times and Washington posts are now the authorities on issues well outside of New York and Washington for just as a minor example uh, in Prince George's, we had, you know, the Bowie blade, um, the Laurel leader. Uh, I think even the Prince George's Sentinel, a lot of those publications have shut down and bought out, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're now where we need, there's a bill, for example, in the state. Oh, my God. That's not the real question. The real question is what kind of damn coffee did they drink back then? It had Coke in it. Oh, my God. Coca-Cola? <laughs> it, it had a lot more <laughs> kick. I'll put it like that. And that's how the West was won. Okay, well, thank you, Richard. Maybe I should have just <laughs> left you alone. <laughs> Marcia, what is the black press to you? Information that commit connects me to my community. Is the Washington Post, is the New York Times, are they going to tell this story? They're not going to tell my story. They're not going to tell our story. And they're going to tell... For black, for black History Month. Well, so that's once one week or one month out of 12 and generally when you go through all of the regular press you're going to find things that will it unnerves me because of the way that the stories are written or presented and they don't speak to the positive aspect of our lives i'm glad you said that richard let me ask you this question when you think of the media and you think of Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott and Baltimore City Council President Nick Mosby, according to, say, Fox News, do they have a good relationship? I think that Fox, uh, that Fox does a bad job of explaining the relationship between uh, Brandon and Nick. Well, I'm not I, I'm glad you said that and I'm cutting you. Okay. Last night, they came to the Black Wall Street event, and had you not known it, they appeared to be the best of friends. And Fox never shows you that. But we have it on video. They were hanging, talking, complimenting each other in a room full of people. You will never see that on Fox, ever. We got to stop letting other... Like, you ever met a Nigerian? Plenty. I, I think I'm in the most Nigerian heavy. Uh, I went to the most Nigerian heavy zip or high school, probably on the East Coast. Okay. Quite often, Nigerians have a perspective of African Americans. African Americans have a perspective of Nigerians. And there's often a filter in it before we even get to meet each other. Put there, this filter has been put in place by mainstream media, where we have prejudices about people our same skin complexion, but they don't know us and we don't know them. But we've allowed someone from somewhere else to tell us who they are and to tell them who we are. Right. You're, you're right, Donnie. Uh, especially in covering Maryland political, I would just say political beef in, in, in contest contestations of power between 
to black folks or uh, or especially like regional things because there's not as much detail given to, for example, the campaign finance history of two different people. I think the best way of demonstrating the differences between Brandon and Nick would be the differences in their campaign finance history and the difference in their appointments. A lot of Brandon's appointments were people who had already worked for Brandon. A lot of Nick's appointments were people from across the state who he brought in to his office because he expanded his, uh, his city council office a bit. I wish that people would also say who people supported in the past campaign. The people who opposed uh, Brandon's appointment for city administrator. I also oppose the concept of a city administrator for full transparency. But the people who opposed his nomination were largely people supported by Nick during his last uh, campaign for city council president. If that was explained, it would look a lot better as the acolytes of Nick opposing Brandon's choice rather than Nick and Brandon personally having beef. That went way over your head, Marsha, huh? He, he, he got way too complicated. Hey, look here, man. <laughs> look, look here, let me help you out. We just getting this coffee in here. We gonna need you to lighten this up and keep it a little bit. Okay, did you see? She looked befuddled. She looked like the World Trade Center on 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 uh, 9-11. All right, give me, give me 30 seconds, Donnie. I'll, I'll, I'll cool down to your level. Give me one second. <laughs> He didn't need to really do that, but that was a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. But I'm glad he brought it and we can follow up with it. I think that uh, I'm going to go back to something that I want to wanted to bring up. And um, Ethel Lo Lois Payne, a bold journalist who fought for civil rights, used the newspaper as an opportunity to share her views on the topic of seg segregation. And on August 14, 1911, Ethel Lois Payne was born in Chicago, Illinois. And from day one, she knew her life would be tough coming from a slave. But she got out there and allowed her voice to be heard. She came from a slave in 1911? Mm -hmm. it's, that's what it says. Coming out of Chicago area, uh, <coughs> Midwest. Ethel Payne, they call her the first lady of the black press. Yes, yes. And there's four pages of in-depth um, information about it. You got to also acknowledge Alice Allison Dunnigan. Dunnigan. Alice Allison Dunnigan also... Uh, Ida B. Wells. Yes. And um, the Murphy family. With the Afro John Murphy. Yep. Afro-American newspaper. I actually worked there. One of my first jobs when I moved to Baltimore. Really? Yep. That's when they were on Utah Street. Wow. I remember, I remember that building right on the corner. Yes. yes. And so the Afro is now getting a building re rehab here in, in Upton. Yes. And it's a beautiful building. The bones look great. It's a huge building though. It's huge. Yes. Well, you know, that also gives him the opportunity to have a location for the Afro-American newspaper archives, which is huge. And they'll be able to properly display it. I'm very excited about that. And the Baltimore. I wanted to be Afro. Did you? I didn't realize that. I'm sure you told me before. I was Afro Boy of the Month several. I love it. Several times, but also worked there under Wiley Hall. Yes. Yes. In fact, when I worked there, Pern J. Mitchell was in in hospice, and oh. Wiley Hall sick me on the Baltimore Sun. They had two reporters, including a black man named Ivan Penn, who snuck into his hospice room. And so my job was to call up the top dog at the Baltimore Sun. So I called the CEO, then the CFO, and then they sent me to the COO. Was that Reggie? Sandy Baniski. 
Mm, And I said, Miss Beniski, can you explain to me why your reporters snuck into our former congressman's hospice room? And it was like the World Trade Center. It was like she couldn't believe that she was called on the carpet. Yes, she should have been. Which included, again, one white man, one black man, Mm -hmm. Ivan Penn. Mm -hmm. I was a really nice guy, but why he took that, he ended up leaving to Florida. Yeah, good. But there was front page at the That's a good place for him to go, Florida. He would have been right at home there. Richard, how (laughs) far can we go before we lose our blackness? Whew. Uh, I I think that comes down to editorial, uh, just writing, um, independence. So damn I'll all see. that. Would you work for Fox News? No, 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 thank you. Uh, I I wouldn't say it's impossible, but I would not be a reporter for Fox News because if I was a reporter for Fox News, there would not be my opinion or even my take of uh, ongoing events that would be transmitted. Uh, I think that being a reporter or of being uh, just a person informing people, it's important they know that it's as close to your mm. accounting, as close to your reporting of the quotes, as close to your reporting of the events um, as possible with, of course, you know, fix errors and, and syntax and such. But that that's what I enjoy about being at The Informer. I pick my topics. I write my stories. Uh, if I, if I get any complaints, it's just a complaint of you know improving the readability or perhaps moving a story so that the more interesting parts at the beginning. But that that's what you said, Donnie. I agree with you wholly. If you ain't the one that's getting your words vetted, you're not a reporter. You're just a person working at a news outlet. Marsha, could you work at Fox News? No. What about the African Americans who do work at Fox News? Do we have a certain perspective of them? No, I think that they probably wanted a job and their politics are probably in alignment with the mission of their employer. And, uh, Richard, they do a slave, a runaway slave report. Okay, my bad. They do a fugitive report where they put mm-hmm. all of the fugitives <laughs> in the area up and but they're never they're never white. Right. They're, yeah, they're always be- black. It's like so every every heinous crime that was ever committed and they, they, they every heinous crime that was ever committed, they put the black suspect up and they have a black slave catcher. Oh, my bad. They have a black law enforcement officer who is telling you. So say it was me. It's like, welcome to Fox News. And we have Richard Deshay Elliott. And he killed 100 people. And his daddy killed 200 people. And Marsha Jews. And she, she robbed 100 <sighs> banks. And her sister's brother's cousin's father's aunt also robbed 42 banks. And that's all it is. Within an hour. They got they got many cops. While she was doing her nails. I think it's I think that it's critical that uh, we have b- the black press. And I think it's critical that we really spend the money to buy the papers or to get the subscriptions. I think it's critical for our children to pass down for generations for us our children, our people to understand what's going on in our communities and being able to see the truth, to hear the truth and to read the truth. You know, too often we get caught up in all this foolishness in these daily papers that do not have our best interests at heart Mm -hmm. at all, that they're racist, they're blatantly racist. And I want to share something with you, my experience (laughs) with the Baltimore Sun. I was working for a company here in town and they never wrote about uh, an annual event that brought in the top level blacks in corporate America. And military. Correct. And 
during that time, I was in a leadership role there and it just really upset me. And I was during that time, I went through the Baltimore City Leadership Program and Mary Junk was the publisher and she was there. And so after she did her little spiel, I left the room and followed her out. And I said, you know, we've been trying to get articles in your paper. I'd really like to talk to you about this and what we need to do to change this. And she said, well, what, call the office, ask for, I think her name was Imogene or something, and set up an appointment. And I said, great, thank you. And I did. I walked in there and they put me into this huge uh, conference room. And John Carroll was the editor um, at that time. And I walked in and I said, uh, I started the conversation and, and I was being polite and he interrupted me. And um, he I said, said, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. And so I said, he said, <laughs> he said, it's very important that you understand that we have our policies and that we do this and that and whatever. We are racist. And, and, and I said to him, and we don't care. The black community believes that this paper is racist. We could care less. And he said, I don't care what the black community thinks. John Carroll and the publisher was sitting right there. And so well, I know said, his granddaughter is mixed. And I said, <laughs> just a minute. And I walked out and I got the information that I was waiting for. And there were all these senior level executives and military as you spoke. And I said, well, if you don't believe that the black community thinks that you're racist, perhaps these this information will be able to help you. And it was a VHS video. And I slung it down that boardroom table like you do one of those Frisbees. And she ended up writing an article, one article, but we got one article. And oh, thank you, white people. We so appreciative. Massa, 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 massa. And I ain't it, saying we that. should we should have don't go to sleep. We should we should not have to deal with that type of ignorance. That now that was back in the 90s. This is 2020. Same, same thing. And we have the good. same foolishness going on. The, the black newspapers and organizations such as these are critical. We have to be able to have our voices heard Marcia, on a regular. These, Marcia, do these people realize how stupid they are? But those are races that come from races that were raised by racists who could give less than a daggone if they, they look do, at what you have melanin care. in your in your skin. They say they don't care. But, but they, Richard, I submit to you that in the final analysis, they absolutely do care. And it's, it's sometimes- They on care the to get that subscription. Oh no, baby. Let's shift gears a minute. Uh, the Baltimore Banner, they come onto the scene, no newspaper, they buy up all of the Sun's reporters, and now they want to be big dog in town. But they have very little black coverage. But on top of that, we are supposed to pay for it. Well, I don't pay for those things. I don't buy those things. I had to warn people, don't subscribe to The Sun. Once you subscribe, you can't unsubscribe until you cancel your debit card. Oh, I haven't had a subscription. I, have, I haven't. I would not want a subscription to The Sun. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know what the banner does. Oh, oh well, while we on this, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What about Zuckerberger? 
What do you think he thinks about the black press? Nothing. Because they are always, I never even knew there was such a thing as Facebook jail. Oh. How does that work on let me bring that topic up. Well, well on one of my dear friends is Black Facebook, Press Day. One of my dear friends is in Facebook jail a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 in the past, I was on almost like a, you know, only a, racists I, come up with Facebook jail. Only racists. That is truly indicative of the mental illness. In some people, well, we should their, probably their check and see. Them, and I guarantee you, their father did not <laughs> put a belt to their hind parts because they. And plus, he's ugly, ugly spirit, <laughs> very ugly spirit. Oh, he's going on a rant. I see this. <laughs> I think it's really interesting. And they try to call me the racist. <laughs> You're not racist? Not a not a racist bone in. My mother and father raised me to love all people. Really? Was that from church? Because your daddy was a minister. My daddy was an undertaker. Uh, no, but he treat prayed people, a lot. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Somebody, however, I heard it best put like this. Treat them like they treat you. How do they treat you? People love and respect. I treat you with love and respect. Treat me what like a side through. piece. Right, right. That's yeah. right. And I'm kindness, a, but kindness always wins. Uh no. You have to fight. You have we to are, fight for we, kindness. We are 13 percent, 12.6 percent of the American population. And this, but despite all of our accomplishments and contributions, we comprise damn near 50 percent of the prison. <laughs> yeah well and there's and, a war and it never stopped yes the prisons are full of our people uh, Donnie, the, the craziest Donnie, of things you you talked about uh fox news and their mini cop segment what are they talking about on roy mcgrath if you know are they they they're showing this picture. I mean, everybody's showing it, so they have to follow suit. I will say this about Fox. They outwork 13, 11, and 2 every day. Every day, they outwork the competition. More hours of news, more news coverage, more different topics. It really makes me wonder, what are the other guys doing? Well, I'll get to some of my... I'll, I'll say some of the things in in traditional media that black media is best to avoid or is is, is right to avoid. Um, a lot of the problem with news even is that there's a lot of things that aren't news that are covered. You look at Good Morning America, for example, which while it's an entertainment segment is a lot of people's news. Most of what they report on is not news. It's not something that has any informational usage in your day-to-day -day life. Do you uh, consider or, Gail a, a journalist? Gail King? Yeah. Um I'm not gonna denigrate her. I think that she that, that she can report on things. I'm saying that the format of the channel, I'm not gonna it, it talk about the individual personalities. The format of the channel and the material that they're given in hand. Um, they, their job is to read the teleprompter. Right, right, right exactly. And the do material, a couple of ha ha ha's. Yeah, the material they're provided just simply a lot of it is simply not news. Does not have informational value. Uh, of course, we can get deeply into both the overreporting of and pathologization, along with the unreporting, underreporting of success and just stuff that's useful for Black folks. If you're trying to figure out, for example, uh, a decent restaurant in Prince George's County. I would hope that you would want to read my column because I've written about different restaurants. I'm not going to write about stuff that's well outside of our area or stuff that is just about, you know, a viral moment that comprises a lot of what's in a lot of on not online, but uh, of the gotcha channels on, on the day to day TV. But to go back to what you said about the sun, one of the people I was in uh, my doc, the a dissertation class with an undergrad, uh, uh, Calvin Perry, 
he looked you at had a dissertation in undergraduate school. Yeah, UMBC is a good school, man. That's why I was published twice by the time I graduated. Uh, so he did his project on the I got Baltimore. Just thinking about that. Yeah, he did his project on the Baltimore Sun and how the language they used to cover the 1968 riots and the 2015 uprising. And just to show that even though it's, you know, almost 50 years later or over, yeah, basically 50 years later, that a lot of the language they use was in the same pattern, the same language as they did during the 1968 events. Richard, their mothers didn't love them. Mm. That's their problem. So the NMPA, which is the National uh, Newspaper uh, Association, they have, uh, it's really interesting, they National have Newspaper Publishers Association, Chiefs Association. Mm -hmm. but they also have um, that talking about the readers that Afri they're African-American ages 25 to 35 and medium income between 35,000 to 45 and um, over 22 million people read the papers um, every week. They have followers on social media, over 12 ma million and 15 million on Twitter and 10 million on Instagram. Marcia. So, and those are from all of the various newspapers from across this nation that are black owned. So you have no excuse not to follow up on the National Newspaper Publishers there, Association. They did in MPA. Marcia, and so there, I'm very excited about that. Marsha, there are 40 million black people. You tell me half of the black people watch black media. I'm I'm looking at their statistics Marcia, here. I'm not, buying, I'm not buying that. Here are their statistics, and I so buy that. Know, let me just say, Black people, we need you to support Black media, like this news outlet, like Marsha's news outlet, like Richard's news outlet, the Washington Informer. We need you to support these papers with your dollars. We need you to support Papers these and papers. live streaming. Huh? Papers and live streaming. Yes. Please, Black people, support the Black press, because here's the truth. When we get in trouble, it is the Black press who's going to be there to correct the story and make sure that it gets told correctly, not the other guys. So we need your support, however you can support the Black press. And on that note, special thank you to Rondi Griffin, to Dr. Tyrone Taborn, uh, to the people who support our news outlets. Marsha, who, who supports your news outlets that you want to acknowledge? So I'm very excited that Dr. Tyrone Taborn has the STEM City USA, and that is where you can watch my shows. I'm very excited about that. And um in that there's an actual newsroom. So if you go to stemcityusa.com, Donnie's show is seen there as well. Um, they have an actual newsroom. And when you go in there, you'll be able to go to the newsroom and you'll see the logos of all of the um, news outlets listed. And so WKIM is one. And um, we, of course, Black USA is on there and several others. So, you know, we have to pay attention to that. And we have to also pay attention to all of the programming that's going on and, and listen to it and share it with our children and explain to our children why the black press is so critical. And so Mom, you'll see it running at the bottom, STEM uh, City USA. Richard, do all black journalists representing black media do a good job. I am not going to insult any colleagues. I think I'm a good reporter. I think I'm a good writer. I think that I uh, have a good perspective because I know a good number of people. But I'm not going to denigrate anybody else uh, that does writing. However, I strongly agree with you, uh, uh, Marsha, regarding your criticisms of The Sun, your criticisms of Fox. Uh, not only do they eat up oxygen in the media space, which is only but so limited, not only do they eat up advertising dollars, not only do they give an outlet uh, for some of the most negative views, but they also don't report on our stories. 
which leads to invisibility in the eyes of white people uh, and justified invisibility, I would even dare say, because people view the press as an inherently liberal institution. When if you look at it on a left right axis, maybe you're right. But if you look at it on a black white axis, not necessarily. Yes. So black press is, is essential. Uh, I would advise that people, you know, not just subscribe and not just watch, not just share, but be cognizant of what you are sharing. Like if yeah. you're sharing, most of your articles are from the sun simply because they're they're breaking news. Think about what that does for the sun's algorithm versus what it does for other people. And the, the, and the content. You know, I think that uh, we should be able to have the voice with press, but I shouldn't have to every time I turn to a page or something uh, with one of these other products, there's something negative above mm -hmm. the fold that speaks to my community. I have a real problem with that. And it was the same thing I said in that meeting with a long time ago with Mary Junk. I don't care about what you say if you're talking about something positive about our community. But if 90% of what you write in your newspaper is something negative about my community, there I have a problem. And she's not the publisher there now anymore, but there's somebody else that has been passed the baton. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want that because now we're, this is 2023. Why are we having all these negative issues? And they report and they report and they report and they, they kill that dog. You know, <laughs> you can only write negative stuff so much about one thing. When are you going to let it go? It's like a dog with a bone. How are you going to, how are we going to change this so that we're now talking about equity? Right. And let, let me add two. it might only be one bit, but uh, the, the Baltimore Suns readership is not even really a Baltimore base. Like a lot of their readership are people in the Baltimore suburbs of Anne Arundel, of Harford, of Carroll and Cecil, uh, of people who maybe lived in Baltimore City at one point and moved or were legacy, you know, uh, subscriptions. So a lot of their paper is not written for Baltimoreans, regardless of black or white in the first place, which right. is a terrible thing about a local paper. Mm -hmm. But it gets to the uh, a, a thing that's a positive of the black press. We are now the best local papers in quite a few areas. If I'm trying to figure out what's going on in Baltimore City, I'm a lot more likely to, at the very least, ask Donnie's opinion rather than trying to read what's going on in the sun. If I'm right. trying to know what's going on in Prince George's or D.C., the Washington Informer is a significantly better outlet than the Post, which the Post barely barely covers Prince George's, I would I would say, unless there's a there's a political scandal. Right. I agree. And and I don't know uh, who the publisher is with the um, Washington Post anymore, but it nope. hasn't changed much. No, nope. and, and because their paper has a national focus, yes, they don't even I think invest as much in D.C. from even the white perspective as much as they did at a certain point. Mm -hmm. They now are much more invested in national news uh, and are really. I would say that the Washington Post and the Times get the most criticism from me, not even because of their material, but because they have pushed every outlet towards the national. We got this first. Right. Uh, regardless of the facts, regardless of how good the sourcing is or even how well we explain the situation, we got there first. Mm -hmm. We aren't engaged in that, which gives us a lot more ability to hone in on the local. Like that's what I and that's what I want to keep focusing on mm -hmm. in my writing and reading. And so as we um, start thinking about this whole day of Black press and its beginnings, what should we be doing with our young people to start getting them acclimated or focused on taking in journalism as a career path? So what really inspired me to get deeply involved in i'd say even learning about a lot of my super local affairs was in my high school i did my yearbook my senior year me and i don't know maybe like 10 to 12 other 10 to 15 other students we made the high school yearbook and that involved me going around getting pictures 
learning how to do certain writing in like different uh in like a pdf versus instead of a, a word document uh meeting a bunch of people who i hadn't met even though our high school was small i've met a lot of people already um doing yearbook in high school was one of my first like big writing assignments you know you could ever say <coughs> so if we could help firstly middle schools don't have yearbooks like i've i I didn't have a middle school yearbook. I don't think elementary schools have yeah, yearbooks. I didn't like, granted, it'd be hard for students of those ages to make them. But I think that making those gives people an investment in caring about what's happening because they can look back on it. Yes. I have no means of looking back on what happened in middle school because we went to like multiple high schools. There was no yearbook. It was a long time ago. Uh, so getting people involved in making their yearbooks in the student journalism when you're in high school, if they have it, I wrote in my college paper at the retriever. I did like athletic interviews, getting people involved in those so they can see this is something that is useful, not just for you to learn, for you to hone your writing, for you to hone your researching ability, but it's also good for those around you, even if they don't know you to be able to look back and remember a part of their lives. Mm -hmm. And that's critical. Memory, I call them memories in progress. Hey, Donnie. Hello there. How are you? I was just thinking oh. when it comes to the black press, what newspapers stand out in your mind? We've mentioned the Afro. We've mentioned the Washington Informer. Just from a historical perspective, are there any other black publications or black news outlets that you would like to acknowledge here on the 196th black press day amsterdam news and black enterprise yeah we just did a a joint uh well not we uh, our editor denise rolock barnes just did mm -hmm. a panel with amsterdam news about nice. uh, ways of of just community solutions to violence. And that was a mm. national panel. Definitely want to shout out Amsterdam News. Also the, the Defender. Yes, the Washington Defender. And, and you could uh, even include uh, what would it be? Ebony Magazine from long, long, long ago. Not now. I'm not going to count that as an example now, but maybe going into the 90s. Oh, it was a go-to. That and Jet. Yes. Like, I, I, think, I, I think that my great-grandma even had some copies <laughs> of Jet. Uh, I that, she, that I don't know if she gave them to us when she passed, but I think I saw them in her room when you know when I was a child. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was a go-to. Everybody got it back then. There was also the there's also the Chicago Defender, mm -hmm. there's the Texas Metro News, and so it, let me just acknowledge Cheryl Smith, a phenomenal black woman who founded Texas Metro News. She is the one who actually informed me that today is Black Press Day. Nice. The National Newspaper Publishers Association, which is a collection of the black newspapers across the country, have Black Press Week, which includes today. So like a few days before, a few days after. Uh, but the rest of the world should know that today, March 16th, is Black Press Day. This is the day that the first black newspaper was established in 1827. And I think that's a very important thing to understand because we <laughs> have this storyline that infers that all blacks were slaves. Mm. And that's simply not true. Not right. all black people were slaves. Not all black people were slaves. Also, America, uh, uh, black history did not start nor end with slavery. We had history before slavery, through slavery, and post-slavery. For the record. Yeah, For Donnie, record. can I shout out one more newspaper? The sure. South was, Carolina was, leader. Mm. That that newspaper you probably never heard of. Uh, my ancestor, Robert Brown Elliott, the first black congressman. He was the editor there. The first black congressman ever? He's the first 
black, like 100% black congressman. There were a few mixed ones before him. He was black. The first black one ever? He was black, black. Blackity yeah. black. Yes. Robert Brown Elliott. You look at the photo, not the photo, you look at the drawing of all the Reconstruction era congressmen. He's all the way on the far right. Me and him have the same nose. My grandpa looks smack like him. Smack like him? Smack like him. <laughs> but that that's the South Carolina leader. Later named the missionary record. Probably does not exist anymore. Let me see. Yeah, missionary record shut down in 19, 1879. Wow. Interesting. But thank you for uh, so, having me, Johnny. Oh, my bad. Go, go, go ahead, Mr. Juice. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, isn't the Detroit Free Press black? Let me see. Yeah, because I've encountered almost all I my press so. online, largest daily newspaper. Huh. Black newspaper in Detroit. I thought it was the Detroit Free Press. I don't know. And that's what I was trying to find to um, for the NMPA to see uh, the list of them from the different cities. Okay, I, 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 I'm looking at a list right on. now on Wikipedia. You got it. Uh, okay, oh, so here's a few, okay. here's a few: the Baltimore Afro American, the Chicago Defender, the Collin Post, which is from Cleveland, New York Amsterdam News, okay. the New Journal and Guide from Norfolk, Virginia the Los Angeles Sentinel, the Philadelphia Tribune, mm -hmm. the Michigan Chronicle, the Sacramento Observer. Yes. I think there are people from the hey, Sacramento Observer. I'm looking at his nose. I don't know that you have the same nose. The Michigan Chronicle. Yes. You're, you're, you're a very sweet person, Donnie. I appreciate your criticism. Uh, Jackson Advocate, uh, Atlanta Daily World, the Pittsburgh Courier, the Indianapolis Recorder, the Scanner covering Portland, Oregon, and Seattle, Washington, the Bay State Banner, covering Boston, Massachusetts, the Tri-State Defender, covering Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, San Francisco Bayview, African-American News and Issues covering Houston, Texas, actually covering Texas in general. Uh, the Final it. Call. There's a lot. There's there's, there's more than I, I can say, but there, there's a good list of them uh, right now on uh, Google and on uh, blacknews.com. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that and updating us. That's huge. Now, I, I will look, say... Look at that nose. I want to talk about that nose right there. That nose. It looks like yours. Is that Thank you. Y'all related? That is something like my grandfather's great, 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 great uncle or something like that. But his his story is uh, I'll I'll go into it. Yeah, they, nice they don't they yeah, don't even nice know where he was born. They don't know if he was born in Jamaica, if he was born in in the U.S. and he made up an identity, or if he was born in the U.K. And he went from that to being an editor at a paper, a lawyer at the first black law firm, and the first black congressman. And the I first black attorney general of South Carolina fighting the Klan. So, Richard, I'm going to need you to, to strike a pose like 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 this guy here. Strike I don't a have, pose. A, I don't have a, a mustache at all. Look at that mustache. Okay, this is do, great. Then do, then do this. Perfect. Same nose. Thank you, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, what made you get into publishing? It called me. The news before the news. It called me. Yeah. I and mean, I had intentions on being a musician. I don't know. But, you know, the Afro, I was selling newspapers. The Afro, I was, uh, there was also this publication called The Pocket by Earl Coger. And I would get it all the time as, as a young kid and read it. My dad had Black Enterprise. No, he had a funeral home, so we had magazines. 
Black and mm -hmm. Black Enterprise. I remember seeing that six, seven years old, East Baltimore. And then Mr. Williams in the fifth and sixth grade had us doing the morning announcements. Mm -hmm. And a half a pint of milk sure sounds delicious. <laughs> That's what my classmates told me that I used to say. And I remember writing and Charlie Duggar by the age of 15 took me on W-E-A-A. -A. Thank you, Charlie Duggar. I love it. That was 1980. And I always enjoyed writing including my first love letter at the age of six as soon as i learned how to write i was writing a love letter that's interesting and so how do how do we how do we get our young people focused on careers in journalism black journalism get them to write love letters and put their love letters in the newspaper. Love letters to their community. Love letters to their parents. Love letters to their grandparents. Get them to write. I love writers. I would publish a Klansman's writer writing because I love writers that much. Mm. I love writers. It's I think Klan people are, are totally ignorant, but you know, I love writers. I love writers that much. Mm. We need to write and tell our story. The reason we often don't get the respect that we need and deserve is because we don't write. We talk. If we, if we wrote letters to Fox, if we wrote letters <laughs> to WJZ, WBAL, WMAR, WUSA 9, if we wrote letters, if we wrote letters and called people by name and articulated our sentiments, we would they would listen more but we don't write so we should why don't we use this moment to say effective today what's the date today oh the 16th of so march the 16th of march that we would start a a handwritten or typed up letter to each one of these local newspapers and share our feelings and opinions to these, the leadership of these local outlets. A letter writing campaign, and not just to them, but also to corporations who take our dollars for granted. I think that this is something that we should, we're going to have the Black News, pre, the Black Press reception this afternoon at, um, what is it, 12 to two today at Nancy's. And I think that this would be a great at 131 West North Avenue. I think this would be an excellent conversation that we should have with our colleagues today. Well, let me let me inform people watching. Marsha, you look like a, an upwardly mobile, educated black oh. person. Yes. I know personally that you have traveled all over the world. Yes. But the mainstream media paints a picture of 131 West North Avenue as a place that certain people in our society do not frequent. Do you feel safe going to 131 West North Avenue? I actually walk from East Baltimore to 131 West North oh Avenue. Oh my God. In a and I, I actually walk from North Avenue up to 25th and sometimes further. I actually walk from North Avenue all the way down to the Inner Harbor and over to Little Italy. Oh and my God, Marsha. I, I literally, final... literally, that's what I did yesterday. I but, walk all over but and then Marcia, up Broadway and over. But I thought Baltimore was so murderous and violent. I, I don't have those experiences. And, and PSO, by the way, I do this whenever I get the unction. So it could be at seven, eight o'clock at night, or it could be seven or eight o'clock in the morning. And I'm perfectly comfortable. as is with my tresses and my coat, my gloves, 
and my smile. No straight razor? I have one in my pocket, just in case. I feel so much better now. Yes. Do you want to see it? No, thank you. <laughs> it has you a yellow drift, handle. You get the drift, Richard. They paint a picture of our community as if it's just the dent of iniquity. Let me give you something else that I've noticed in the mainstream press. Richard, do you remember the Ford brothers in gorgeous Prince George's County? The I, Ford brothers did a shootout in front of the police station. It was four brothers. Before they were in lockup, their pictures were on the television screen. This is about four or five years ago, the Ford brothers. This happened within a few weeks of a white man killing two sheriffs in Hartford County. They never showed that white perpetrator's picture on the news, ever. Right. Killed right. two white sheriffs, Hartford County. Right, right. The Ford brothers didn't even make it. They were still in the paddy wagon and their pictures were up on the news. That right. is the racist nature of these ignorant people in America who call themselves journalists. That's and exactly no right. More than perpetrators of venom, of vicious venom. Perpetrating a fraud. Vicious venom, and they wouldn't make a pimple on a real journalist. Whatever. Yeah. Right, perpetrating they a fraud. Carry the jockey strap of a real journalist. Because they are a fraud. blinded by their own ignorance. Hmm. Blinded by the light. That's a song. Why are you a black journalist, Richard? Uh, there's a need in Prince George's to have some semblance of local coverage. The Post is not going to do it. Uh, there's a few different blogs that cover maybe one happening or another happening. But in, in Prince George's County, in Prince George's County. Hold up. This is the most populous black jurisdiction in the state of Maryland affluent that just voted in its first black governor. Yeah. And, and has had black Congress people has had majority black County council, et cetera, et cetera. And for local coverage, you have what the post chooses to cover. You have what the sun chooses to cover here and you have the informer. There's a couple of different blogs, but almost all of those are either, you know, political focused or environmental fo focused or or history focused and cover, you know, maybe a, a little bit here and there, but are not, you know, just news. So with the informer, I have the opportunity now to make sure people have not just an understanding of what's going on, but also at least some of the relevant details to understand why. Just as a minor example where local journalism, black journalism comes into play. And Prince George's zoning policy is very confusing. The only town that has its own zoning is Laurel. Every other place is controlled by the county council. Every story that relates to development, that relates to public nuisances of tobacco and liquor stores, I include that fact so that people understand you should go to the county council about these issues and not their mayor. Richard, do you know that other people watch the black press, but they will never acknowledge it? And on that note, well, did you know that? Did you know that the white mainstream media watches this show and they often steal our stories? Yes. You, they could try. I, I, I report well, mine do. direct to they my do. editor. They do it regularly. Mm -hmm. But let me also tell you mm -hmm. that we feature white people on our platforms too and we give them a fair shot mm -hmm. like your boy bj o'connor <laughs> bj o'connor has been on this show several times even though he talks smack it, it smack. will probably come back and i'd like to know how you two maybe not now but eventually i'd like to see is what that you his name bj o'connor 
we 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 don't we don't gotta say the guy's name, but I'd like to see a segment between you and him when it's appropriate to assess how Westmore, Comptroller Learman, and uh, Attorney General Brown are doing in their tasks. I don't think we're close he doesn't to the like party. anybody. I mean, we know black people like him. He doesn't like anybody. I think that you'd be interested right now. He has more criticisms of Comptroller Learman than of the other two. Mm. Why don't people like that run for office, Richard? I, I I get a little annoyed at people who don't like anybody. We have them in the black community. Darren Muhammad is hard on everybody. But it's like, Darren, who do you like? Because somebody has to take the job. All right. It's the truth. Somebody's going to get the job. Are you going to support anybody? Because if you're not going to support anybody, then you're really not against the people. You're against the system. Okay. Well, it's all right. one, and I guess that's all we have time for. Uh, and any, we'll see you at 12 o'clock, and I'm very excited. Any closing thoughts on Black Press Day, the 196th? edition yes we can, make we can. make certain that you support anything that looks like a newspaper or a news outlet and it's black just support it and know that you're going to get a great value for your money marcia when is your show would you like to plug it oh yes we're every tuesday night between six and eight and we have several others and they can follow you. They can where? follow me on LinkedIn. You can follow me on Facebook. And you can see WKIM YouTube channel and see all of our past shows. Thank you. Thank Richard. you, Donnie. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Uh, Richard, you want to do a one final acknowledgement? Yes. Um, so you want to read my stuff, go to the Washington Informer.com. We update our website with new online articles uh, every Wednesday night and Thursday morning. Uh, and Donnie, for how we'll celebrate National Black Press Day, next time you call me and ask me to be on your show, I will be on your show to offer my opinion and insights. Thank you for having me. Thank and you, Ms. Marshall. Right here? Congressman Robert Brown Elliott. And do you know him? He looks sort of like me. Okay. <laughs> Keep watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, world. Thank Good morning. You. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.